Assalamu alaikum, Pio Doshok, you're watching Business Talk. My name is Sufi. As usual, we talk about business and we talk about successful people in our community. Tonight, I'm talking about a successful man who's uh, very established in our community. I can say he's a young man, but he's also my age, so I can really relate to that to me. And I can say he's a young man. I uh, lived in Camden, and we, tonight we're talking about also about accident management company. How does accident management work? Uh, the car for cash for crash. But before we talk about it, let's find out who's my guest uh, in the studio tonight. So let me introduce my guest. His name is Abdul Samad, the Vantage Accident Management Company Managing Director. Assalamu alaikum, Samad. Welcome to Business Talk. Assalamu alaikum, Sufi. Um, thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you, Samad. Bhai. Samad, bhai, I came to the program to react slightly different. We're going to talk about on your success, but same time, we're going to talk about the accident management company on Monday. Then, we're going to talk about the And basically, we want to go back a little bit because after that, we're going to talk about television or about social um, um, organization. After that, we're always support Quran. But always, it, it comes in a price, something. So, but how can you afford and how do you do that? How? And, and I, I, you know, you're doing really well in Mashallah, and we're very proud of you as well. So I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to talk to you accident on Monday. Can you ask a question about the accident management company? If you have an accident on Monday, you can talk to us on, 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 on the air as well. And we've also taken a limited call because I'm going to talk to you about Samad Bhai. Samad Bhai, um, let's go back and talk about your school life. Like, obviously, you brought up in Camden. And um, if you school life, you can do a course in school. Okay, first of all, in the show, so I attended primary, secondary, and higher education in this country. So, I attended primary, secondary, and higher education in this country. So, um, during my school, secondary schooling, I also worked in a news agent, um, helped my brother out in his restaurant in Amtil. So, I have, along with education, I've always worked. I mean, those, those days, I think, it was obviously, I was talking about the first time, I was talking about the first time, I was talking about the first time, those days I was slightly different. Now, those days were different. You had to fend for yourself, and, um, no, uh, and a lot of people like myself was doing the same. So, I mean, I used to help out in a news agent or work in a news agent. I'm sure you've done yeah. uh, similar things at I that used, age. I, used, I, I did uh, a paper round, uh, yeah. you know, news age and everything. So, like, at that time, maybe my parents wasn't giving me pay, uh, you know, they didn't have enough money to give for, you know, um, to go out and do things. So, I, I chose to go out and do some work and do, do the things I like. Samad, I will disagree with this because I tell you what, when I speak to your brother and he said you were a spoiled brother, I rem he said you used to drive the delivery with a Mercedes, brand new Mercedes, you done a delivery. And uh, Mercedes, no, Mercedes, and Chantomar Afnar Baye, and Afnar Gulay delivered his son, take away delivery. I think you, you had a restaurant in Highgate and you, you had a crash. Tell me about that. Well, uh, that's not mine. This was my brother, <laughs> yeah. so I, enjoy, but, I, mean, I was yeah. enjoying it. But he yes. said that we were spoiled when you were young. Yeah. No, in, in cars and other things, yes, I was spoiled. But then I always earned my own money and my, I, I made my own part in life. So you're trying to say you didn't get anything from help, obviously blessing from them, but you didn't get any help from... No, there was the moral support there, but yeah. there was help there, but I never wanted that or needed that help. Okay, so... What, so, the uh, money. So, what did you do? Have you opened the restaurant yourself? And like, you know. Yes. Yeah, so, what I did in the beginning, when I was 14, 15, 16, I worked with my brother, helped him out on Friday and Saturdays. And as soon as I turned 17, left school, I opened my first establishment along with your brother, okay. your brother, myself, and restaurant and Said. We opened our first takeaway in Highgate when we were 17. Kobir was about 18. Okay, and how did you find this experience? Money, what no effort so money, killer and business tassel. Well, at that time, actually, I'm not a beshi business or hotta beshi bustamna. So, along with um, um, studying, so we had to do something else. So, I was we also had a partner. Um, yeah. I'm the, the community so, so yes, yes, from Victor Stone. Victor yes. Stone, yes. Yes. So he, he was your. Uh, yeah, so we Astri used to call him a lawyer. Anyway. Yeah, us three were the partners there. So uh, he was 17, I was 17, uh, COVID was about 18, so we opened the first establishment in, in Highgate. Um, and mashallah, from there, everything. And I used went to be well. a delivery man in and a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember, I remember when he closed, uh, when we left, uh, Sadi gave me some money. Yeah. I think I actually more, earned more money than you guys on that time because I used to sell cars behind, didn't it? Probably. So, so after that, 
like you know um, you opened more and yeah. just tell about like maybe more like about in Essex so than others like so, you know how so you actually go you start making money so along along uh, when we opened monsoon so it was me Sadek your brother and um, we all had different ideologies so the initial first one we sold so while we was in Bangladesh, Sadek chose to sold it, which was fine. Then I came back and I said I wanted to, to do this. I liked it and the business was good, the money was good. So I I opened a chain of uh, takeaways, so covering mainly in North London. So okay. we had Islington, Camden, Putney, Mitcham. You had a lot of branches. Yeah, Hackney. So we, we had a lot of branches there. So, um, and I did that till 2007. So. Obviously, you did you did alright with one or two, but others you didn't do that well. What went wrong? I mean, what do you think if you go back again? Wrong kito, you said. If you think now and say like, I mean, the to la Well, as you know, there was quite a few. There was about seventeen. So the wrong was is people did not have the because I couldn't manage seventeen myself. So people didn't have the hunger that I had. I want if yeah. I opened a place, I wanted that place to do well. I wanted to, to make money and some people were just happy because we were young then yeah. so some people were just happy with the 250 or 300 wages they didn't need want any more than the, that. Your, your partner you're talking about your yeah. partners okay. yes uh, and um tell me one thing like you know obviously we see now uh, in the indian restaurant we see justed uh, delivery with lots of our branded but you had the idea many years ago like uh, how Justy doing now or other company like Chef Online and things like that. So she had this, you know, when you had a branch in Kensington, you yeah. had, you, you, were, you were doing not with the one line, but you were doing different style wise, yeah. but trying to make the same way how Justin making money 20% or 18% whatever the rate. Um, so I, I, how did you get this idea? I guess it was in 1997. Yeah. So I had uh, obviously 17 restaurants at the t takeaways at the time. So I thought, why can't we make all these 17 into one? So I opened a company called currylondon.co.uk. Okay. So at that time, everybody wasn't that technical. So what we used to do is, so we used to leaflet Curry London and advertise Curry London. So, um, and then there was one, one call center where they would take the calls and then we would fax that order to the local restaurant and they would go and deliver it. Also, you used to include other restaurants as well? Yes, and other restaurants as well. So, so that's what I'm saying, like you yeah. had that kind of vision. Yeah. On I that had point. the idea, but I, 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 um, I wouldn't be able to deliver the whole full of it. So I sold it on to another company, which are probably that company at some point, uh, Justice must have bought that company off at some point. Okay. Uh, um, so you left, why did you leave the restaurant business then? What was the reason? Um, Restaurant was very good, and it, I hope uh, it's still good. The reason I left it was I, I wanted a break, and uh, managing all this at once wasn't so. I had other ideas to make money. So I thought, let's put this aside and go and do something else. So at one point, I went to Bangladesh to do some business. It didn't work out. So Tell, tell, me, tell me about Bangladesh, because we always I always like to hear in my show, when people invest in Bangladesh, how success they are in Bangladesh. So obviously you bought lots of land and uh, you know other stuff how 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 did you find bangladesh because you went one point you went bangladesh for good you took your family everything yeah. and i remember i told you i said like you'll be back again yeah, yeah. so i'm not happy you're back yeah because i wanted you to stay there and so at least you can i'm rather look after but so what went wrong in, in bangladesh well actually nothing went wrong bangladesh is the opportunity uh, the country with lots of opportunities and you know obviously the system does is difficult but it's a country to make a lot of money and you can make money quite quickly um, the reason i came back home is the difficulties of my wife my children um, adjusting to the country and its ways um, after 11 months, they thought, oh, no, this is, not right this, this is not what we want. So I had a daughter, she's in uh, her teens, um, so it was 13, 14 at the time. So she gave me the hard time and then I thought, no, if they're not happy here, then... And I didn't enter into business at that time, I was just observing and looking at what I can do. So then when the family wasn't happy, I thought, no, I'll come back to this country. Right. Investing a lot of money on land in Silits. How do you regret investors' money, or do you still think you are, you are doing good? Or uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't regret it. What it is that will be uh, with land. You could never lose money. Yeah. So it's there. If I ever need it, that's my pension, isn't it? Okay. That's okay. Going to this is the only business you actually st stayed very long, and mashallah, yeah. you done really well. 
um, compared to your catering. You've done well in catering on that age, yeah? yeah. Compared to now, obviously, it's different, yeah? Accident management company, yeah. right? Uh, it's like I used to do finance, mortgage. So that time you used to see people walking on the street and picking up phones that can I help you. We used to see Edva in the TV. <coughs> now, we had the same same thing in our, in our community. Every one of them was doing accident management company. We knew a few of the biggest company in, in Bangladeshi community were doing, and they were doing very well. They're still doing very well. So why did you come to that accident management company, and how success, how good are you doing at the moment? Okay, um, accident management came to me by chance. So when I was away, when I went to Bangladesh, uh, my partner Yusuf was also in Bangladesh, so he stayed stayed in my house for about two three months. In Bangladesh, yeah. So he was going at me every day, you know, let's do this, let's do this, because he's been involved in the business, you know, for a long time. And I didn't think much of it, and I wasn't quite convinced to go into the business. So when I came back, obviously I had nothing to do. So I had no businesses, I had no work. Um, so I thought. Uh, uh, I thought, okay. Did you say, is there easy money? Why don't I do it? Or is there easy no, no, I didn't know anything easy money, hard money, nothing is easy money. So um, I gave it a little thought and I said, okay. Um, so we came with a business plan how to start and I agreed with him to go into this business. I didn't know nothing about it. I didn't understand it. I did, he was telling me for three months how it is. I still didn't understand it. And I said, okay, why is he being so persuasive? Um, let, 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 let me give it a try. Okay. Um, we had in our community, even in, in ATN Bangla, we used to have at least three for Edva in yeah. the TV, yeah. accident management company, different name. But all of the, most of them are actually no longer in the business. Why do you think is that? And, and how cautious you have to be, like how perfect you have to do? Like, I guess the rules and regulation has been changed. Like, I guess one next in the show too. You will have to have more paperwork. You probably have more paperwork to do now than before. No, what it is is. Um, with every industry, if you have money, there's a lot of money out there for everyone to earn. If the industry doesn't have money, then everything is shrank. So, um, and more contingency, more compliance, more stringent. So we're dealing with insurers. If they have the money, uh, the, the amount of things they look at now, they would probably not look at it and say, okay, just let's pay them. When they don't have the money, they have to look at savings. If you look at lo in London, Manchester, Birmingham, yeah. Bradford. Why is the insurance so high? Well, the insurance I, mean, I, I, I would blame someone like you, say like uh, Afnar al in you know, a false claim. Do, are you agree with me or disagree? No, I totally disagree. Um, companies do not make false claims. Individuals make false claims. We are good companies will vet it properly. They will check it. They will check it, but you can't check 100% what is true, what is not true. But uh, a good company will have a sense of good and bad claims, so um, it's to the down to the individuals. Companies can't be blamed for it, but the, it's all easy for insurers to say, "Oh, uh, the insurance is going up because of all these claims." So if now, if you go back from 2007 to what I do now, uh, the fraudulent claim rate is very low. So as has our premium gone down? No, it's still going up. But we don't hear this in the media as much as we used to hear before. Yeah, so our premium has not gone down. It's always going up. So um, if, if you're paying yeah, a higher like price, it's, it's like never going to go like to lower price. Any. Yeah. Like every year it goes up because of the... So yeah, but that's fine because that's yeah. harmful, uh, harmful yeah. to individuals. Like no one actually stops smoking though. They still it's continues. No, I'm sure yeah. it does some prevention. Yeah. So the what you're saying, the you know, the... Uh, the industry that um, the claims cash when, I, when, claims I, when, I, when I moved from um, Camden to Wood Green and Wood Green to Anabi to Hertfordshire, yeah. my insurance went down. Yeah. You know? So if you look at the, if you look at the, there's a lot of people live in Camden, a lot of young people. If you go to Hertfordshire, there's older people. Young people are more likely to have more accidents. The more house, more cars to the household. The population is more. So the insurance have their own ways of uh, putting a premium on a postcode, on a person, on a car. So, uh, yes, so the further you live out, it's a, it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, so I, I, I lot of in uh, advert we see, like, especially like Bangladeshi community television yeah. advert, so, so, suppose ATN or other channels, yeah? They want accident or a taradi kushu, 
ikta mani khotokan apne gulo ge agree horon then ekta accident is say you should be upset you should be worried yeah but he's saying don't worry go to ekta example dilo like go to vantage will help you mani ido kom somonde apne mani kita mon horon mani don't ekta accident to you should be worried okay. but how is he how is he more well maybe your adverse portray happiness but when Uh, an individual is involved in an accident actually there's nothing to be happy about because the yeah so there's there's nothing to be happy about because as an individual it, it's a very very stressful process so you know i ca i uh, maybe in your adverts people look very happy when they've had an accident but in real terms when people have accidents fault or non fault the premiums go up um, until the case is settled um they don't get caught they lose income they don't get uh replacement in car t- in time and there's so many difficulties people face tell me one thing like i, I always wonder uh, i had a accident quite a while ago and was a big climb because my car actually rolled over to someone else and i had a lot of our community people say oh, i can get you this i can get you this benefit blah blah, blah. what is the difference going from direct from your insurance company or coming to a um, you know um, specialist like you like what's the difference kita help why mani especially if afna afna ro khota koyam jara amra beshish khori amra jara mani cab driver ase or tara lai kita benefit very good question because that's that that is, that is a uh, but ami ami personally mono kori ami samad bage jaitam khane this is a million dollar question yes so as you understand our community um why the services are probably different so difference between their insurance or insurance if someone comes to my company i probably can give them a car in the middle of the night so you take the risk basically yeah. you you uh, Do, being the insurance company you will not be able to provide a c- client with a car any time of the day um second thing is the language barrier it's a lot of filling up forms um uh, being on the telephone for hours hours and hours and then talking to one founder to another founder so that's the difference with us you come you see you see us you meet us your cars outside so there's not um like you know the in other essence there will be one recovery company one hire company one injury company um so lots of people will be involved if you go to your insurance company while you go to a management company basically they will, they will deal with everything for you so tell me what uh, i'm going to come back to you on that question again injury claim on injury claim or restriction kilahan Well there is no restriction on the injury claim is maybe the compensation the compensation size has gone down but there is no restriction but the, the, this this injury claims in due time maybe in 2019 the government are, are changing the laws so if your uh, injury claim size is less than 2000 pounds you probably have to get your own legal legal representative so the other pound not by go to the legal that kill the money you're yeah. going to make from so the two, I, I, in the case i don't know how it's going to work for individuals but that that might be the case okay so so the, 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 your mainly customers are many cab drivers they overall everything no we cater for everybody but um but i seem to get a lot more mini cab most, drivers most 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 yeah. management company especially in the asian dexi edward dexi dexi one always you know trying to campaign for many cab driver yeah? yeah so the benefit is obviously tara english matter fine but tara you la many processes killer when once you have accident what do you do So once we uh once someone has an accident they come to us we take the whole circumstances then we notify the insurance company that look this has happened so uh, and then we wait for further response so in 5 6 7 days time we send them the damage report so what damage is into the car and ask for payments and that's how it works okay. so you know when they have someone have an accident and ikta tarad jodi ami deshe kono shomoy accident advertise mane ta khata apna jodi dusho na the amrer phone hor jani so basically suppose hon uh, apne tara misleading korillo holo bala ki jani amar dush nai in 50 50 climb yeah. so who takes the risk of that do you still charge them yes of course the, the ultimately the client is liable for everything so um a lot of lot of the companies work like that so we'll we'll assess it we would know even if someone was not telling the whole truth we would know by seeing the seeing the damage of the country okay so i think you will come yeah. coming after the break the shagaf na ramla takba will be back after the break and you can hear from samad bai what he's got to say about his success so stay with us